Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to be here, and I'm super excited that you guys are here as well. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button uh, over here, over here, and don't forget to subscribe. Um, I post new videos every week on Sundays, but I'll try to get them out on Fridays if I can remember, or if I have the time to do it. Um, let's get right back on to the video. So today is going to be uh, centered around HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it's basically going to be beginner's uh, web programming. Um, we're not going to do anything server related or anything like that. We're just going to cover like a lot of the important topics that need to be covered in order to create a foundation for a very efficient and uh, user-friendly as well as accessible uh, web page. One more note, I'm super sorry I'm using my crappy webcam instead of like my actual nice camera. Um, <laughs> it's just easier to set up as opposed to my camera. Um, especially since most of the video is uh, coding and presentations anyway. So uh, when I actually do more talking videos, I'll actually actually use my real camera, not the crappy uh, webcam. <laughs> All right, so today is going to be uh, beginner's web programming, um, which is basically going to give you a solid foundation for um, what the general structure of a simple static web page is and how they all like how it all kind of like blends together to create what is in front of you on YouTube as well as anything else on the web. There will be a simple tutorial at the end, so make sure you have some kind of a text editor, whether it just be like an, whether it just be like Notepad or um, a Notepad plus plus or uh, VS Code, Atom. There's also this uh, interesting like old school one that's uh, open source called Emacs, which is a lot of fun. It has a psychotherapist in it. Um, built into it. Uh, you could also use just like your terminal, like Nano or Vim. Uh, Pico is another one, um, just any kind of a text editor. All right, so the general overview is uh, we're going to hit HTML, CSS, and JavaScript today. Um, with HTML, we are going to visit the head, uh, head tag uh, a lot more, as well as link and meta, uh, meta tags. Um, and then there's also going to be an example that I'll show you within the slides. Um, CSS, we will cover uh, how to define the different styles uh, using different parts of the HTML uh, tags and attributes, as well as the precedents, so how they uh, operate within the different orders. Um, and then there will also be an example as well. Um, and then there's going to be JavaScript, and we are going to do some inline JavaScript as well as file JavaScript, like external resource uh, JavaScript. Um, and we'll also cover ECM ECMAScript, and there will be an example that shows those too. All right, so HTML. Uh, typically, all HTML uh, documents require that we define that it's an HTML document as well as the root of the HTML. Um, the way that we do that is through doc type, the doc type HTML uh, tag, which is uh, depicted on the right in the example. And we also have the HTML tag uh, displayed there as well, where we are defining the attribute lang. Uh, this attribute is typically required to be uh, defined in order for your HTML to be registered as valid HTML. Um, we're gonna use lang, uh, the lang English, um, language English, uh, since we're in the US and uh, this video is in English. Uh, two other important tags are the body tag and the head tag. Uh, the body tag contains the content that is displayed to the user and the head tag com uh, contains all of the metadata and information of the document, uh, typically defined with the link and meta tags. Uh, the link tag typically defines the relationship between HTML and external resources. Uh, we are, uh, we define this relationship using rel and href um, attributes uh, on the link tag. Then we also use a uh, meta tag uh, to define the metadata about an HTML document. 
The important attributes uh, that we need to set on one of those is the char set, name, and content, which uh, I will show you how to use uh, later in, in the video during the tutorial. All right, as you can recall from the last video, CSS stands for cascading style sheets and cascading style sheets is very, very important to understand like the concept behind these styles. Um, it's supposed to represent a like waterfall effect, you know, of the uh, stylings. Uh, listed on, on the left side of the slide, you will see that you can define uh, the different styles using the specific element of an HTML uh, DOM element or the ID. Uh, uh, which is defined by the ID attribute of an HTML tag, as well as the class attribute. And we can also inline CSS as well. Um, some examples of uh, typical HTML elements that are used are P for paragraph, the body tag to define like the standard uh, font family that you want to use on the entire DOM. Uh, there's also unordered list, which is UL. Um, LI is the list item. Um, the article tag, so you can uh, style an article. There's the div tag, which people abuse so frequently. <laughs> and then there's the spans. Uh, so those are like the main ones that people like to use the most. Um, for ID, you will, I'll show you how to use that later, but on the right, you can kind of see uh, at the bottom the HTML and how this like kind of operates. So the footer has the ID footer as well as a class footer, and it has some inline styles as well with the style uh, attribute on the HTML uh, tag. Um, so the order of precedence from least important to most important is the defined element. Um, and then the class overwrites that, and then the ID overwrites that, and then the inline is like surpasses everything else. Um, so what you can see here is the, the initial color of the text is going to be red, but then it's overwritten by blue, and then it's going to be overwritten by green, and then, and, and then finally it will be overwritten by orange. So what is actually going to end up being displayed to the user is the orange con uh, orange content, the content with the color orange uh, instead of any of those other colors. All right, so now we're at JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript, as you recall from our last video, uh, basically defines the functionality of your HTML DOM. So ECMAScript uh, is the uh, scripting language that forms the basis for JavaScript. Um, ECM ECMAScript uh, is the standard uh, that is set by the ECMA International Standards Organization, um, which is defined with ECMA 262 and ECMA uh, 402 specifications. Uh, this can be uh, found on the two links that are uh, hyperlinked in this uh, slide set that will be linked uh, on GitHub. So within your HTML, you have to define your uh, JavaScript with uh, the script tag. There are two different ways to uh, express this. One of them is through inline uh, JavaScript as well as, uh, and the other one is the external resource. On the right within the example, you can uh, see uh, what that entails. With your inline JavaScript, you can use the async and deferred um, attributes, but typically you want to use those on your external resource uh, def uh, file definitions. Um, the first one uh, shows you the async and deferred uh, for an external resource. What this means is it uh, goes and fetches that JavaScript at different uh, points within your browser's lifecycle and your page's lifecycle. Um, so when your browser inits a web page, it uh, goes and fetches like different resources and then pulls them up on your uh, browser. But that's not the main point of this slide or this discussion. Um, 
But yeah, so this is this is kind of like how you would define those two things uh, within your uh, HTML. All right, so now we are at our tutorial phase. Um, we're going to build a basic web page. Woohoo! What you will need is a browser of some sort, and uh, I prefer Chrome just because it's easier. You don't have to like enable a bunch of stuff um, in order to use it. Uh, what is the other thing? Oh, you also need a text editor, like I said at the beginning. So uh, open up your text editor, and um, we'll get started, as well as your browser. Uh, excuse my uh, my flummy voice. <laughs> my my uh, allergies are flaring up. Okay, so I'm going to define three files. Um, one is going to be landing.html, although you can also do uh, index.html, which is uh, much more apt. Um, and then I'm also going to do styles.css and uh, functions.js, uh, which I'm going to incorporate in the uh, into the HTML um, as we move into the tutorial. All right, so I'm gonna define some uh, header elements uh, with the link tag. Uh, I'm going to link the style sheets as well as go, as well as linking the prefetching of them. So that way, once they are, uh, once the DOM is loaded onto the page, the uh, elements will be styled pretty quickly um, to basically give a faster rendering of your page. I'm going to define all of the meta tags. Uh, so there are five important meta tags that you should always define on your HTML in order for uh, other like external um, websites can pull in your uh, website like much more uh, nicely. <laughs> Uh, so the five meta tags that you need to define are uh, keywords, title, description, image, and URL. You also need to define the char set as well, but don't forget to add in all of the property and content per uh, tag. All right, so now I'm going to define some styles in uh, inline in the, uh, well, not inline. Um, I'm going to define styles within my HTML. Um, <clears throat> doing this actually helps uh, rendering your uh, DOM a lot more efficiently, uh, but I don't recommend um, adding all of your styles into your HTML just because it slows down the initial uh, fetching of your HTML to the browser. So uh, I normally just define like key uh, key uh, ingredients basically for your uh, <laughs> for your uh, HTML uh, styles. Uh, you'll see which ones I typically define within my, uh, my uh, HTML. As you can see, the text is now uh, centered uh, onto the uh, DOM completely. Um, I'm going to open up the dev tool so you can check out uh, all of the uh, actual content that got loaded onto the HTML page. Um, you'll, you'll even see that the console log that was at the bottom of the script is now in there as well. As you can see, the little CSS that I've added in does have a lot of responsive uh, elements to it. So as I click and drag the page around, you can see that it responds as the drag happens. As you can tell, I've defined the uh, font size now to be in the ex external file of CSS. Uh, I defined the uh, font size to be 10% of the viewport height. So it's also responsive. All right, time to add some uh, external JavaScript in. Uh, I've added an additional console log to the external file as well as a set timeout, uh, which is an asynchronous call that um, basically allows you to define a function that can be rendered and called uh, later on in the script. Uh, I set it to three seconds. Thank you so much for watching and these files will be linked up below on GitHub as well. Ciao!